but it is faster for me to adjust the position of those drawing layers like I just did than it is for me to redraw the arm on every frame because if I if I have a fold and I bend my arm I don't just have to draw the first and the last positions I have to draw the first the last and everything in between now you can try to do something with morphing but the reason I tend to personally stick away from morphing most of the time is because of the fact that uh, with the morphing rules you kinda have to have the same number of lines going to the same number of lines and um, and you know you can get morphing to look really really nice but it sometimes takes a little bit of finessing and for me I think it's just easier to move the position of my drawing layers around so if I can accomplish the same look by moving drawing layers without morphing I will choose to do it without morphing when I need to morph I will morph like last week when I did the head tutorial and um, in this case I've, I've, I've still got it open here but this is the one that had the uh, the deform on it but but you know you remember if you watched my head rig from last week I did have a very similar result that I got out of this by morphing if you're working with Anime Pro. So when I need to whip that morphing out of the bag, I will whip it out of the bag. But to make my life easier, I'll choose to use a pencil line and I'll choose just to use my contour editor to move the position of the points around. Because I know that if I do that, it's going to morph nicely and I won't have to do too much finessing or massaging to get my morphing to work well. So you know in the case of something like the elbow this is the reason why I like to just move drawing layers around so you can make the two inside drawing layers a child of that lower arm in animate by just dragging them on top of it and then you want always these two um, upper ones or the two outside ones to be a child of the upper arm because you don't want to leave them out entirely because if you leave them out entirely then they won't follow when you animate the arm and whoops I didn't put a let me just throw a pivot point on there I'm doing all the pivot points very ad, ad hoc on this rig because I'm doing them as I go but um, you know if you, you you still want you always want the folds to follow with the arm so either you make all four folds a child of the upper arm or you can make these two a child of the upper arm and these two a child of the lower arm and naturally if you need to have three of these folds or whatever then you can have as many of these as you need and you might also want to have one that's kind of hidden halfway underneath there that appears when the arm full when the arm bends it's up to you you know you can play around with the positioning of these different drawing layers and uh, for those of you who are working in animate then you might need to also do some nudging in order to get these in the right place in your camera view because as soon as you drag and drop the drawing layers on top of each other to create that hierarchy it might adjust the Z positioning so you might have you know one of these dropping drawing dropping behind when you need it in front so if you need to nudge layers you can always remember it's the alt and down arrow to move it forward and alt and up arrow to move it back but when you're working in Animate Pro and Harmony we would do something slightly different um, we would go here now I always like to work with peg layers and I've I've discussed in some earlier videos why I like to do that Basically, I find it easier to, to have peg layers so that I can keep my keyframes separate from my drawings. Even though in the new versions of Harmony, you do have the ability to, to turn on these drag modes so that you can drag just keyframes or drag just drawings, which really opens the door a lot. But I still like to work with having peg layers, and particularly if you're an Animate Pro, you don't have these drag and drop modes yet in Animate Pro. So you probably want to, if you're working in Animate Pro, have peg layers so that you can keep things separate. So each drawing layer that I work with is going to have a peg layer to control it. And then on top of that, you can string these peg layers together to create your hierarchy. So um, I've got my upper arm, which is a parent of the lower arm, and the upper arm is also a parent of the elbow folds on the outside, these ones here. Um, I also have the um, lower arm here, and so if I look at the lower arm, it's a child of my upper arm and it's a parent of these two folds here and for the sleeve that we're going to do next week it's also a parent of the sleeve but we'll talk about that one in more detail next week and then in terms of the positioning in space you want to make sure it's pretty easy in this case you'll follow that um, you'll follow the uh, circle joint technique to get these drawing layers overlapping properly so that the lines aren't following each other or aren't um, you know conflicting with each other 
And um, then on top of that, so if I look at what the circle technique does on this one, let me try to get rid of uh, some of the stuff here that's in my way to show you this. But basically, um, I don't want to look at my lower arm sleeve yet because I'm going to talk about that one next week. All right. But if I just look at what's going on with the lower arm and the upper arm, so I've got my lower arm and... Um, and if I if I remember what my circ my circle technique does, then I want to take the color override to cut out just the um, so that I don't have the lines overlapping. I'll take just the the skin color of the inside, and I will overlap that on top of the upper arm. So I'll take my um, now in this case I've got some additional stuff happening with this lower arm and this um, and the sleeve layer there, but in terms of what's going on and that's where did it go sorry I've got a lot of stuff going on here but in terms of I'll just describe it so in terms of what I'm doing with the circle technique I've got my upper arm that I'll have going at some point in the timeline I want a copy of my lower arm going underneath my upper arm and then I'm going to have a copy of the lower arm but just the skin color going on top of everything so um, that is basically what you want to do for that circle technique and you can review that with a circle technique video but then when it comes to the folds um, you can adjust the positioning and space of the folds by just making sure that their pipes are going on top of everything we want the folds to show on top of both the upper arm and the lower arm so you just can drag those pipes over further to the left so this is something that you can't do in anime which is why you need to do that nudging and that z-depth stuff but in Animate Pro and Harmony, it's um, you can the first layer of the order in the camera view comes from the timeline, and then next to that, on top of that, you can adjust the pipes in your composite. So the left side will show on top, the right side will show underneath. So if when you make your hierarchy, um, then it if it messes up the order or you know doesn't give you the right order that you want in the camera view you can adjust the position of these pipes to pop them in front of the other layers. So let's say, for example, if one of my drawing layers was behind and I didn't like the position of that drawing layer being behind, then I can simply select that drawing and um, you know I can move the pipe over to the left to pull it in front of those other drawing layers. So um, that's pretty much it that I wanted to talk about for this week. So in order to get these folds and to animate the folds, you, um, oh, it looks like I did some, uh, some extra animation there. I think I added a keyframe at some point. So let me just take that keyframe out of there so that I can see what I did. I can always remove a keyframe with F7. All right, so just to summarize, in order to get this working, what I did was I have one drawing layer for the upper arm, I have a drawing layer for the lower arm, and then I have four drawing layers to represent the folds there. I use the circle technique on my arm to get for the upper arm and the lower arm so that I don't see the line on the arm, and then I have the four drawing layers just on top of everything. And then when I animate the position of that arm, I can animate the lower arm, and then I can animate the position of these fold layers separately. So hopefully that helps you guys to have an idea of what we would do. And then I'll go over this um, extra piece next week so that you can have some fun doing an extra advanced rigging tutorial with that one. So stay tuned next week, and I will talk to you soon.